Thanks for joining us again. We're continuing our conversations with Dr. Paula Caliguri, learning from her unique insight on how culturally agile leaders are increasingly more valuable and effective as the drivers of international business growth and success. Excellent. You, you mentioned uh, uh, the, the talent pipeline as, as one of the big challenges um, for companies when they're looking for, for folks who are culturally agile. What, is, what would you say is the number one challenge facing companies um, as they're expanding globally? Well, let me offer the answer from the lens that the webinar will be really be focused on, and, and that is that there's a lot of myths around how people develop culturally, cultural agility. Uh, one of the big myths is that you take pretty much anyone who's worked in the organization, who's worked their way up to a certain level, and if you send him or her on a global assignment, an international assignment, and leave them in another country for a year, year and a half, two years, whatever it may be, that they poof, become culturally agile. What we know, and now we have years of research to show this, it's not just physically breathing the air of another country. It's actually having some dispositional traits that lend well to getting the most out of a great, well-constructed experience. So in the webinar, I want to talk about both. I'm going to talk about not only the who do you bring in to the organization, but also what are those what are those great experiential opportunities to create culturally agile a culturally agile workforce. Could you could you give us an example of a company that you admire for being really really strong in this area? A, a, a company that is very culturally agile and that has embraced uh, this philosophy and some of these best practices that you talk about in a really positive way. Now, there, there's pockets of phenomenal practices. For instance, I, I, I just adore, uh, GlaxoSmithKline has a program called Pulse. It's an international volunteerism program started by their CEO, Andrew Witte. It started in, he it began it in 2009. Each year, they send out 100 associates who volunteer to do this to to volunteer their basically sabbatical time to live and work in another country in an emerging market and to do something for humanitarian support. So most of them are working within NGOs. And what we found, we did the stakeholder analysis, and what we found is that the individuals who are on that experience when the experience itself is well constructed, the needle moves in terms of their, their cultural agility. The needle moves in terms of what competencies they bring back to the business. The needle moves in terms of their engagement with the organization. It's, it's, the, win, it's the ultimate win-win-win. So there's, there's lots of these examples, but, but I think that those are, you know, that one in particular is a, is a great example of, of how companies can can craft experiences. And again, in the webinar, I'll, I'll spend a little time talking about uh, how companies can, can build experiences like Pulse. Excellent. Thank you. So I understand that folks that attend the webinar will also be able to take one of your culturally, uh, culturally agile self-assessments to learn a bit more about where they can improve their own um, skills and competencies in this area. What are some other tips and best practices, and, and how can this self-assessment help guide them through um, to become uh, more culturally aware in the long term? Sure, John. Actually, the, it's called the CASA, the Cultural Agility Self-Assessment, and it has three parts. The, the part one is around the competencies, the competencies that I mentioned, things like tolerance of ambiguity and cultural humility and competencies like perspective taking and divergent thinking. These are all critical for, for global professionals to have. So they can do self-assessment on those, those critical competencies. There's also an assessment where you're asked to put in some experiences that you've had working or living with people from a different culture or in different cultures or maybe being a global team member or having a roommate who was from another culture, whatever the experience was. And we do a little diagnostic on those experiences to actually look at the experience from the perspective of developmental properties. Oftentimes, a lot of business travelers in particular, they believe that they've had extensive experience, extensive international developmental experience, when in fact...